Okay, so let's welcome back Morgan Ortegas, our friend. She's a former State Department spokeswoman in the Trump administration and founder of Polaris National Security. Morgan, thanks again for sit joining us this evening. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu, the prime minister, yeah. snubbed the U.S. yesterday by canceling a visit of an Israeli delegation. This is the sensitive negotiations, contentious negotiations about a ceasefire continue. And that was after the U.S. abstained <laughs> on that crucial ceasefire resolution in the U.N. So how should the United States proceed now? Well, I think the Biden administration should basically do the opposite of everything that it's been doing as it relates towards Israel. Abstaining from the U.N. and letting this resolution uh, effectively go through and take effect uh, is a bad precedent. The Biden administration has it completely backwards when it comes to actually finding an end to this war. If you want to get the American hostages home, which this administration shamefully does not uh, message about enough, if you actually want to get American hostages home, if you actually want to win this war, you need to put the pressure on Hamas, not on Israel. Hamas is the terrorist group that started this, uh, these terrorist horrific attacks on October 7th. And every time you give Hamas the space to think that they're going to be able to survive and to thrive after this war is over, then they have no incentive to actually negotiate, which is why you always see them yeah. uh, walking away from the negotiating table and turning down ceasefire deals. Put the pressure on the terrorists, not on our friends, not on our allies. It's completely uh backwards. Oh, okay. So what about U.S. leverage now with relations again at a new low, I would say? I mean, we, they weren't that great between uh, Bibi Netanyahu and, and President Obama. Uh, it seems to be at a new nadir at this point. Uh, what kind of leverage is the U.S. giving up by having this contentious relationship? Well, I mean, listen, we've called, we've seen the administration, not the administration, we've seen uh, Senator Schumer <coughs> essentially call for regime change uh, amongst a Democratic ally and to tell people that the prime minister should go. So, you know, how is the government of Israel supposed to feel whenever mm -hmm. uh, these types of, of rules and norms and decorum about how you talk about other democracies uh, are being, you know, just run roughshod over? So um, at the end of the day, Israel needs America. America needs Israel. This is the only true and th thriving democracy in the Middle East. But this is the fallacy that they had in the Obama administration as well, which is they thought if they pressure and pressure in Israel that they would get to a different outcome. We turned that calculus on its head in the Trump administration. We rewarded our friends and allies, Israel and the Gulf Arab states, uh -huh. and we punished the Islamic Republic of Iran and terrorist groups. And it's why we saw the decimation of the physical caliphate of ISIS in Iraq and Syria in 2017 and 2018. It's okay. why we saw on the pressure on Iran. And it should be no surprise, by the way, that ISIS is now resurgent under the Biden administration. Uh, I'm going to, Morgan, at this point, yield to the gentleman on my left uh, from the District of Columbia, Scott Bolden. He's got a question <laughs> for you. Hey, Morgan, Scott Bolden here. Uh, I don't hey, think Scott. U.S. and... How are you? I'm, I don't think Israel or the U.S. is going to leave Israel. They're like a family. They're not, at the, they're not agreeing on what's going on right now. Yeah. But you've got to agree that uh, the U.S. is certainly not taking it easy on Hamas, but there are 1.5 million innocent Palestinians that you've got to deal with. I, I don't think that you can, you can go into Rafah without having a two-pronged approach to this thing. You'd agree with that, wouldn't you? And if so, what do you do with those 1.5 million innocent Palestinians? Where are you going to put them? Where do they go? Well, the one thing I know is that neither I nor you, Scott, have seen the war plan for Rafa and what Israel's plan is there. That's true. I do know that there are more aid trucks going into Israel uh, on a daily basis. And I'm concerned about those 1.5 million civilians, absolutely, which is why Hamas should surrender, which is why Hamas mm -hmm. should release all of the hostages. By the way, we still have five Americans that have been held captive by a terrorist group since October 7th. Uh, if Hamas were to stop the hostilities, if Hamas were to release the hostages, then we could get to an end of this war. So I'm incredibly frustrated because I don't think Hamas represents the Palestinian people. Uh, I would love to get to a peaceful resolution for the Palestinian people, but they have been failed not only by Hamas, but by the Palestinian Authority leadership, by Mahmoud Abbas, who's lined his pockets, who has house after house, has enriched his children, enriched himself at the expense of his own people. The mm. Palestinian people have been utterly failed by the Palestinian Authority, by Hamas 
U.S. Uh, and by, frankly, all of the Arab nations uh, in the region. And so, yeah, am I worried about those civilians? Absolutely. There's, there's enough blame to go around everywhere. I haven't seen the war plan for Rafa, but I can tell you, if this was the United States and we still had 20 to 30 percent of a terrorist group on our border with Canada, we would take out that terrorist okay. group. Okay. Thank you for watching. And make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.